attempts a translation from Heine by James Thomson, Bishvinolis, by S. S. H. E. Vinolis, The Pilgrimage to Kevlar. I. At the window stood the mother, in bed the sick son lay. Oh will you not get up, William, and see them marching away? Oh I am so ill, O oh mother, that I cannot hear or see. I think of my dead Maggie, and my heart is broken in me. Oh oh get up. We will to Kevlar, take missile and rosary. The mother of God our Savior will heal thy heart for thee. Oh they wave the broad church banners, they chant the holy song. And through Cologne on the Rhine stream, the procession draws along. The mother follows the pilgrims, and her sick son leadeth she, and their voices. Join in the chorale O oh, blesser be thou, Marie, O oh, two. The mother of God at Kevlar today wears her richest dress. Today she will be right busy, such numbers come in distress. And all the poor sick people bring with them offerings meet, they are little waxen figures, many waxen hands and feet. And who a wax hand offers, his hondel's wound hurts no more, and who a wax foot offers, his foot is healed of its sore. To Kevlar went many on crutches, who now can dance all night, and many now play on the vial whose fingers were helpless quite. The mother took a wax light, and there out shaped a heart otake that to our dear lordl's mother, and she will cure thy smart. O oh, sighing he took the wax heart and knelt to the holy form, the tears from his eyes outstreaming, and the words from his heart blood warm o thou blesser among women, Godel's virgin pure from taint, thou queen of the highest heaven, to thee I bring my plaint. Oi lived with my dear mother in the city of Cologne, the city for many hundreds of churches and chapels known. Own next us lived Maggie, she lived, she lives not now Marie, I bring thee a wax heart, my bleeding heart heal thou. O heal thou my heart sore wounded, and early and late to thee will I sing and pray with fervor blesser be thou, Marie, O three. The sick son and his mother were sleeping from all ill, when lo, the mother of Jesus came gliding in so still. She bent down over the sick one, and softly laid her hand upon his heart, then vanished smiling sweet and bland. The mother saw all in her dreaming, and fain had seen yet more but she was roused from slumber, the dogs made such uproar. There lay outstretched beside her her son, and he was dead. On the pallid features sparkled the light of the morning red. The mother folded her hands then, she felt so wistfully. Devoutly sang she softly, O oh, blesser be thou, Marie, O oh, the laurely. I know not what evil is coming, but my heart feels sad and cold. A song in my head keeps humming, a tale from the times of old. The air is fresh and it darkles, and smoothly flows the Rhine the peak of the mountain sparkles in the fading sunset shine. The loveliest wonderful maiden on high is sitting there, with golden jewels braided, and she combs her golden hair. With a golden comb. Sits combing, and ever the while sings she a marvelous song through the gloaming of magical melody. It hath caught the boatman, and bound him in the spell of a wild sad love. He sees not the rocks around him, he sees only her above. The waves through the pass sweep swinging, but boatman or boat is none, and this with her mighty. Singing the laurely hath done. The mountain voice. All sadly through the stern ravine rode there rode a horseman brave. Oa. Oh, uh, draw I near to my darling elf's arms, or near to the gloomy grave. Oh the echo answer gave. Otto the gloomy grave. Oh and as the horseman onward rode a deep sigh heaved his breast. Oh if I thus early go to the grave, well, in the grave is rest. Oh the answering voice confessed. Oh in the grave is rest. Oh slowly a down the rider's cheek a tear of sad thought fell. O if but in the grave there is rest for me, for me in the grave eltis well. O where to the echoing knell, O in the grave eltis well. O for many thousand ages the steadfast stars. Above have gazed upon each other with ever mournful love. They speak a certain language, so beautiful, so grand, which none of the philologians could ever understand. But I have learned it, learned it forever, by the grace of studying one grammar, my heart tells own darling else face. In the Rhine, in the beautiful river, the Mighty shadow is thrown, with its great cathedral, of holy and great cologne. One picture in the cathedral, on gilded leather wrought, unto my life else wild sorrow hath gracious comfort brought. The dear Madonna, with floating angels and flowers above. The eyes and the lips and the contours are all just those of my love. The lotus flower doth languish beneath the sunnel's fierce light. With drooping head she waiteth all dreamily for night. The moon is her true lover, when he wakes her with his glance. To him she unveils gladly her gentle countenance. She blooms and glows and brightens, intent on him above, exhaling, weeping, trembling, with ever yearning. Love. The world is dull, the world is blind, and daily grows more silly. It says of you, my lovely child, you are not quite a lily. The world is dull, the world is blind, and judges in stupid fashion it knows not how sweet your kisses are, and how they burn with passion. I blame thee not, a broken heart my lot, O love forever lost. I blame thee not. Though thou art splendid with the diamonds bright, there falls no gleam within thy heartel's deep night. Ilve known this long. I saw thee in clear dream, and saw black night within thy soul supreme, and saw the worm still fretting at thy heart. 
I saw how wretched, O oh my love, thou art. Yes, thou art wretched, and I blame thee. Not, s my love, we both must ever wretched be. Until deathless peace concludes our fatal lot, my love, we both must ever wretched be. I see the scorn which round thy pale lip weaves, and see thine eyes outlighten haughtily, and see the pride with which thy bosom heaves, and wretched art thou still, wretched as I. In secret round thy mouth a pain thrill steals, through tears held back thine eyes can scarcely see, the haughty breast a bleeding heart conceals, my love, we both must ever wretched be. The violets blue of the eyes divine, and the rose of the cheeks as red as wine, and the lilies white of the hands so fine, they flourish and flourish from year to year, and only the heart is withered and Sarah. The earth is so fair and the heavens so blue, and the breeze is breathing so warmly too, and the flowers of the meadow are gleaming through the sparkling and glittering morning dew, and the people are joyous wherever I view. Yet would were I in the grave at rest folded close to my lost lovel's breast. I gazed upon her picture, absorbed in dreams of gloom, till those beloved features began to breathe and bloom. About her lips came wreathing that sweet, sweet smile I knew. The eyes were softly gleaming with tears as fresh as dew. And my tears sprang then also, the dark cloudles rain was shed. And, O oh my love, I cannot believe that thou art dead. A pine tree standeth lonely in the north on an upland bare. It standeth whitely shrouded with snow, and sleepeth there. It dreameth of a palm tree, which far in the east alone in mournful silence standeth on its ridge of burning stone. My darling, thou art flower-like, so tender, pure, and fair. I gaze on thee, and sadness steals on me unaware. I yearn to lay my hands then upon thy head in prayer, that God will keep thee ever thus tender, pure, and fair. O oh say, where is the maiden sweet, whom you once so sweetly sung, when the flames of mighty heat filled your heart and fired your tongue? O oh, ah, those flames no longer burn, cold and drear. The heart that fed, and this book is but the urn of the ashes of love dead. The old dream comes again to me with May night stars above, we two sat under the linden tree and swore eternal love. Again and again we plighted troth, we chattered, and laughed, and kissed, to make me well remember my oath you gave me a bite in the wrist. Oh darling with the eyes serene, and with the teeth so white. The vows were proper to the scene, superfluous was the bite. My darling, we sat together, we two in our frail boat. The night was calm o'er the wide sea whereon we were afloat. The spectre island, the lovely, lay dim in the moon elves' mild glance, there sounded sweetest. Music, there waved the shadowy dance. It sounded sweet and sweeter, it waved there to and fro, but we slid past forlornly upon the great sea flow. My heart, my heart is mournful, yet joyously shines the May. I stand by the linden leaning, high on the bastion grey. The blue town moat thereunder glides peacefully along. A boy in a boat is angling and whistling a careless song. Beyond, like a well-known picture, all small and fair are strewed houses and gardens and people, oxen and meadows and wood. The maidens bleach the linen, and dance in the grass for glee. The mill wheel scatters diamonds, its far hum reaches me. Upon the hoary tower a sentry box stands low, a youth in his coat of scarlet there paces to and fro. He trifles with his musket, which gleams in the sunshine red. He shoulders and presents its eye would he shot me dead. Questions. By the sea, by the desert midnight sea, stands a youth, his heart full of anguish, his head full of doubt, and with sullen lips he questions the waves. Su, oh, solve to me the riddle of life, the painful primordial riddle, which already has racked so many heads, heads in hieroglyphic caps, heads in turbans and black barrets, heads in wigs, and myriad other poor perspiring human heads. What is the meaning of man? Whence comes he? Whither goes? He, who dwells there above in the golden stars. Oh the waves murmur their everlasting murmur, the wind sweeps, the clouds scud, the stars glitter indifferent and cold, and, a fool awaits an answer. As I each day in the morning pass by that house of thine, it gives me joy, thou darling, when you at the window shine. Your dark brown eyes they ask me, as only sweet eyes can who art thou, and what ails thee, thou sickly foreign man. I am a German poet, well known beyond the Rhine, when men the best names mention, be sure they mention mine. And what ails me, thou darling, ails many beyond the Rhine, when men the worst woes mention, to be sure they mention mine. You lovely fisher maiden, bring now the boat to land. Come here and sit beside me, well prattle hand in hand. Your head lay on my bosom, nor be afraid of me. Do you not trust all fearless daily the great wild sea? My heart is like the sea, dear, has storm, and ebb, and flow, and many purest pearl gems within its dim depth glow. The moon is fully risen, and shineth over the sea, and I embrace my darling, our hearts swell free. In the arms of the lovely maiden I lie alone on the strand, O oh, fought sounds in the breezel sighing? Why trembles your white hand? O oh, uh, that is no breezel sighing, that is the mermaidens all song, the singing of my sisters whom the sea hath drowned so long. O oh, where? 
Where shall once the wanderer weary meet his resting place and shrine? Under palm trees by the Ganges? Under lindens of the Rhine? Shall I somewhere in the desert owe my grave to stranger hands? Or upon some lonely seashore rest at last beneath the sands? Ever onward, Godel's wide heaven must surround me there as here, and like death lamps oler me swinging night by night the stars burn clear. Body and soul, the poor soul speaketh to its clay I cannot leave thee thus. Ill stay with thee, with thee in death will sink in black annihilation drink. Thou still hast been my second eye, embracing me so lovingly, a satin. Feast robe round my form doubled with ermine soft and warm. Wolves me, I dare not face the facts quite disembodied, quite abstract, to loiter as a blesser not above there in the realm of thought, through heavenly halls immense and frigid, where the immortals dumb and rigid yawn to me as they clatter by with leaden clogs so wearily. Oh, it is horrible. Oh, stay, stay with me, thou beloved clay. The body to the poor soul said, Oh, murmur not, be comforted. We all should quietly endure the wounds of fate, which none can cure. I was the lample's wick, and to dust consume. But thou, the spirit, must be saved with care, and lifted far to shine in heaven, a little star of purest light. I am but cinder, mere matter, rubbish, rotten tinder, losing the shape we took at birth, mouldering again to earth and earth. Now, fare thee well, and grieve no more. Perchance life is not such a bore in heaven, as you expect up there. If you should meet the old great bear, not Meyer Bear 3, ill the starry climbs, greet him from me a thousand times.